Hello everyone. Today's video is going to talk about a statistical tool that you can use to look at grindability data and help inform how you're going to construct um, some statistical analyses and geometallurgy. So what we're going to look at is a QQ plot, which is a way of determining if your data set is normally distributed. So normally distributed in this sense means Gaussian in statistical terms. So QQ plots are a standard technique used in statistics. And basically the idea is you, you plot some metric. It can be either the, the data itself or quantiles. This is a way of, of adjusting and normalizing the y-axis. But the key thing you're doing is you're changing the x-axis so that normal data should appear like a straight line. We're going to be using the Octave software. This is freely available open source software. It's kind of comparable to MATLAB for people who are familiar with that software. Um, for those of us running Linux, this is normally available right in the package manager in your Linux system. So you don't have to do anything other than go open the package manager and download the software. If you're running any other platforms, you can get it from the website I've got here, octave.org. And the code that I'm going to show you here is available to download, again, open source. Um, just go to agdconsulting.com slash code slash qqplot.zip. So I'll put this link in the uh, description to this video. So what we do, we're going to have a folder that has basically three files in it. When you unload the zip file, these are the three files you'll find. And we're going to load some data into this CSV file, and then we're going to run in Octave this MyQQ plot. So we're going to start up Octave. Here we go. And I've got some data here from the Malartic mine in Quebec. So this is published data. This is from a 43101 um, 43101 report. So we're going to take the ball mill work index data and we're just going to dump it all into this file called qqplotdatavalues.csv. Uh, we can leave the spaces in here, but it's kind of a good idea to take them out for, you know, you can't load text into this file, it can only be numbers. Okay, so we're going to save that file. Again, we're going to just check and see that we're in the right folder. Yep, we're in the right folder. We've got the, um, the myqqplot file. So we can just run myqqplot. So what it's done is it has read the data that was in this text file. And then it also has created a plot showing that data that we entered as the, the blue crosses. And then the red line it puts through here, this is kind of like the one-to-one -one unity line that we would expect to see if everything was normal. There is a, a Shapiro-Wilkes test built into this thing to tell you whether or not your data is sufficiently normal to just carry on doing your analysis. So this data passes the test and we do have one outlier out here at the very uh, soft end of this data. So this stuff looks good. You should be able to confidently use your normal statistical tools, do geometallurgy and so on, on this deposit using this whole data set as one whole piece. So now I'm gonna show a different example. That was Malartic. I'm gonna bring up Another project called Hound, Houndy, I don't know how you pronounce this. Uh, okay, key thing, this project was done, um, the, the test for it was done in two phases. It was a first phase and there was a second phase. So I'm just gonna load the whole works into the data file. I'm gonna take out the space, save. 
And then I'm going to run the MyQQ plot again. So it's going to now run on this new data set. And what we see here is that this, this data doesn't really look like it fits the, the red line. And the, the Shapiro Wilk test has failed. This says that this data in the form that I put it into the file, it's not sufficiently normal that we should be using statistical tools on this data. So what we can do is we can check and see that maybe these two different programs don't belong as a single data set. Maybe these need to be modeled separately. So in, in a geometallurgical sense, we might have two domains here that we can't model as a single domain. So there's an easy way to check that. We're just going to take this first batch of data, stick it into our input file, save that. And then we're going to run the plot and looks good. So the, that first block of data, that first program, it satisfies the uh, Shapiro Wilk test. So it looked like it's normally distributed. And then we'll do the same again for the second program. So we'll load that data in, save it, run the plot again. And sure enough, it works. So this is an example of a check that we can do to say that we've actually got two geometallurgical domains here, or in this case, it's actually two different test programs that don't quite line up for whatever reason. So these need to be modeled separately when you're doing geometallurgy. So one final comment, if we now look at the folder where the uh, the plots are sitting. You notice we've got a new file here, which is a, a scalable vector graphic. So what that is, it's our plot again, except that it's in a form that we can now paste that into a report. So if I open up, um, well here in fact, I can probably just put it in here. So I can take the SVG file and I can just drop it into our spreadsheet or I could drop it in a report. So that's, that's another cool thing in this system. In the, um, you can change this output file here to, to a file name that, that suits you. And then you can just import that SVG into your final reports. So that's gonna do it for this video. QQ plots are a, a simple way to check whether your data is normally distributed. And if it's normally distributed, then you can confidently go on and do geometallurgy around the, that data set. And when you see data that fails the Shapiro-Wilkes test, it means you need to poke a little deeper and see why. Maybe you've got multiple domains in that one data set. Maybe there's something else going on, like test programs that are run to a slightly different basis. So this is a good way of, of checking to see just how normal your data is. And then just um, to check and see what is actually in this Octave file. So the MyQQ plot file is something that you just run on the, the shell of Octave. It's, it's not like a module that you embed in anything else. And there's a few little things here that you can adjust. Make that a little bit bigger. So you can tweak the, the title that appears on the, on the plot we're gonna create. You can change the label on the y-axis, depending on what data it is that you're, you're mapping. And you can also change the file name. So those are the defaults. You can get in there and change all of these. If you make a change, you just save the file and then rerun MyQQ plots on the shell. So with that, I will sign off and talk to you in the next video.